We have a lot of changing situation in our world. The U.S.-China trade issue is one of it. Uh, the question is whether the international community would still safeguard the international trade system and also safeguard the world order. Absolutely. Look, I mean, I would say that there's no question that globalization and trade opening has benefited the world. I think, you know, it's an indisputed fact that uh, the world is better off today with a global uh, trading system that is based on rules, right? So the issue is not so much uh, for kind of what we need now is maybe greater protections. You know, if people are unhappy with the system, I believe, and I'm not a trade uh, specialist myself, but I believe that it has to be negotiated. I don't think that, you know, uh, trade wars will benefit anyone. It won't benefit China, it won't benefit the US, it won't benefit any of the large economies, nor will it benefit emerging markets. Whatever changes needs to be made has to be negotiated because a multilateral system has been established after the Second World War, as yes. you know, Bretton Woods institutions emerged, the World Trade Organization uh, emerged. So I think there are, there are appropriate forums out there to negotiate and define new rules of the game if the rules are outmoded. But the question is whether that rule is likely to be broken and that is going to be detrimental to the world, including to multilateral banks like yours. You know, on what basis would you operate? I think that the multilateral system today uh, is dependent on that kind of broad consensus. I think the idea that one or two countries can dislodge that is no longer possible. I mean, the world is so interconnected in so many respects, mm. not just in terms of trade, in terms of finance, global movement of people. Uh, even you know, China or the US or UK, France, U EU cannot opt out of what is a, a global and a multilateral system. Our bank, together with the World Bank, the International Finance Corporation, all of these institutions were set up by treaties agreed on by many countries. Right. In the case of the World Bank, 188 countries. In, in our case, uh, by five large uh, uh, economies. Emerging economies. And, and, and those are multilateral agreements. If one party is, has uh, some uh, grievances, I think it's important for those to be subjected back to discussions in those forums. Mm. But it shouldn't be done outside of the system. I think that's what most people have been saying here over the last two days. What I've been hearing, people are saying there, are, there is an established system. Let's try and find and modify rules within the system mm. uh, to ensure we can still have prosperous economic growth. The other party would complain about the inefficiency of those platforms. They would also complain about what they see as unfair reactions from those platforms. Uh, how do you see these kinds of more looking internally rather than looking at the bigger picture vision that some of the economies has acquired over the years? I think all the voices that I've heard today in all the talks that I've uh, listened to, everyone is saying that increasing protectionism is not the answer. It is not the solution. There might be legitimate problems being raised, but we know for sure that a trade war is a zero-sum game. Mm. You will have tit for tat and uh, um, it will not take us in, in any new place where we will be better off. Yeah. So I think once we move from that starting point, uh, the enabling environment is there to find some consensus. The five members involved in the BRICS that are shareholders of your new development bank are all having very direct trade relations with the United States. I just wonder within these countries, uh, how much consensus is there to maintain what you have already had, which is the new development bank, and also in a way to cultivate this platform so that it play a more significant role, it play a more balanced role. Can you really do anything for what is going on right now in the world? I think, look, within multilateral relations, countries also have bilateral relations with uh, each other. So the yes. New Development Bank is, is an embodiment of this desire, this intent by emerging markets to have a bigger voice in the world economy. So the, the BRICS countries, especially China, India, Brazil, these are large economies that have now claimed a, a bigger voice. They also have relations with the EU, they have trading partners with the United States, Canada and other large uh, uh, economies. The two are not inconsistent with each other. It doesn't mean because we are trying to build a greater say for the BRICS countries in the global system that that goes against the other relations that uh, uh, exist. Mm -hmm. What is profoundly negative about what is currently uh, happening is that economic power is being used to, um, to exercise and, and, and one should really use public policy and negotiated platforms to resolve issues rather than using force and power.
The two sessions, together with the 19th Party Congress, has adopted this blueprint for China's development. In the next three years, three major battlegrounds, as they say. One is eliminating poverty, extreme poverty, that's what we're talking about. The other is try to help to protect the environment. The third is reduce the risks in the financial sector. Yeah. Every one of these tasks has something to do with the mission of your bank. Absolutely, absolutely. One of the most exciting parts about the CDM this year is this focus on quality growth, this focus on moving away from quantity. Over the last 40 years, as you know, there's been this huge focus on China achieving the right level of growth, and China succeeded in lifting mm. hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. That is an amazing achievement. However, it came with significant cost. Firstly, environmental degradation. The quality of air you know out exactly. there in large, uh, sit, large major cities in uh, uh, China. Levels of inequality are extremely uh, high. So what China uh, intends to do now, and, and the lessons of this is also there for BRICS, is to look at quality growth. How can we ensure that in the next phase going forward, we deal with inequality. Mm -hmm. We ensure that uh, whilst we have growth, that we have more innovation in the economy, that we remove the financial fragility, for example, that has caused the financial crisis. And the economy can grow. Look at Iceland. It was a spectacular success at one stage, and then it was a spectacular failure after the financial crisis. So yes, financial fragility is, is, is another key uh, issue. Retraining and training uh, workers, because our economies are dynamic. Some industries uh, um, decline mm -hmm. and new industries, for example, come up. We need to retrain workers to be uh, uh, aligned with the skills required for the new uh, phase of growth. Right. So all of these uh, uh, areas will constitute the agenda to uh, uh, which you defined as reducing poverty, uh, environmental, uh, and so on. Within the platform of New Development Bank, there is an issue, Leslie, that everyone has the equal share. That means equal say. And then when you have five emerging economies, equal say sometimes means long negotiations. So what does that mean to your work? Uh, sure. Look, I, mean, I think that uh, the model is still un unfolding. Um, it was a element built into the very fabric of the new development bank to have 20% each shareholding for each of the five countries. To date, it has served very well because I think these five countries believe it's not about economic power and dominance. It's about persuading other member countries of your position and trying to work towards uh, consensus. But at the same time, we will not hold up. If we don't have agreement from all of the five countries, progress is not going to be uh, stunted. Mm. The important point I would like to make here is that each of the, five, uh, each of the other four countries, their vision, their, their desires are very much in line with China's. We need to uh, green our economies, we need to look at inequality, we need to deal with the financial uh, system. So the three priorities that were set by the Chinese uh, Communist Party at the, at the, at the Congress uh, and now with the new policymakers having spoken here, right. these countries are aligned with that vision. The new Development Bank was set up a few years ago, but now you see a new lineup of Chinese uh, officials at different important positions. How do you think that will, in a way, create a necessity to further communicate and sharpen the vision for a new development bank for the years ahead. Most of the policy makers that uh, are in their new roles, and this is a tradition of the Chinese policy uh, system, are very experienced uh, uh, policy makers. So the fact that they now have a different responsibility uh, does not mean that they are completely new to this area of work. They bring a depth of knowledge which we can then uh, leverage from. So mm. they, they bring knowledge from different parts of the system, yeah. which will enable different us to be, to be more effective in yes. what we uh, do. So there's a richness to that kind of change in personalities in different roles. This is going to be 40 years reform opening up China. Hopefully the next 40 years will be another miracle. The past 40 years have been a miracle, but as I said now, it will be a little bit more challenging to uh, improve the quality of that uh, uh, growth as, as we uh, spoke about.